Who's that? Commander Claw. Who's bad? Commander Claw. Thank you for clicking on the very first episode for the series, It Ain't That Good, where I talk crazy mess about expensive cards, overhyped cards, trending cards, and maybe even your playgroup. So what's the reason why I created this series? Because too many viewers don't have their own opinion of a card, and they just follow the hype and ultimately create the same decks listed. Don't get me wrong. I believe pre-cons and deck building templates are good and the most important and fun aspect for Commander Format in Magic the Gathering. However... Deck building can be difficult, so in this series, we're going to help you make a better decision when you're deck building by reviewing cards, because it's true, for some cards, it ain't that good. Without further ado, card number one. Blah, my name is Edgar Markov, and I'm a $70 commander card. If you're looking for more things for your books, I suggest you look elsewhere. In my playgroup, we don't allow proxy, but I encourage other players to make a proxy of him because the price point is misleading on how good this card actually is. Let me go ahead and say, it ain't that good. You're restricted to Vampire Tribal. That means you can only play the weak supporting cast of Vampire Creatures in MTG. Go ahead and comment below the strong supporting vampires that you can build around this deck. You'll be listing mostly 2-1s or 2-2 vampires with mediocre abilities from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Am I right? Overall, the Mardu Commander, which is black, white, and red, is just another straightforward aggro deck. Deck constructors are going to get all hyped up looking for vampires or different strategies for Edgar Markov when he is a straightforward aggro commander. His abilities say so. For example, Eminence possesses a problem. You will never cast your commander until you're swooping in for the kill. You're relying on the vampire supporting cast just to drop a 1-1 vanilla vampire? Nah. While you're going in for blood, Edgar Markov has haste and first strike. But when's the last time you've seen a vampire without flying? How is the supreme overlord of vampires grinded like delayed delta flights? He does have a built-in anthem ability, boosting the power of all your vampires when he attacks. But one sweeper or boar wipe from an opponent and you're stuck rebuilding your army of bloodsuckers. There isn't another way to build him. To buy a $70 commander and only have another aggro deck? It ain't that good. Tell me, tell me, tell me, the best single target removal in red besides Chaos Warp. Write your answers in the comment below. I'm honestly expecting nothing because Chaos Warp is by far the best one. But wait, it ain't that good. By far, Chaos Warp is the most popular tuck spell in all of MTG. Clearly, it's a staple that embodies the foundation of red because it's the best single target removal it has. It's famous because of the risky drawback of exchanging a card from the top of your library or your opponent's library and putting it onto the battlefield. But what makes this card turn into something is really the excitement factor for Chaos Warp. That right there sounds stressful. It's already stressful in real life. That's why we play Magic to get away from the stress. So I must say, it ain't that good. Now it's time for you to really listen. The next card is Prismatic Bridge. At first glance, the five-colored enchantment attracts players' attention with its artwork two-sided card and long text box. If the massive glowing prism beam and the silhouette of Erica God of Tree doesn't say, make a slot for me in any of your five colored decks, you're crazy. The number one problem with the enchantment is it can only fit in five colored creature heavy decks. Let me read the card for you. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Right there, you are limited to five color commanders, and you need strong creatures. I get it. You can use your creativity and add only a few planeswalkers and or creatures that are combo pieces. That's asking one card to do a lot in your 99 whenever you get it. Nonetheless, that is whenever you actually casted the five colored enchantment. Second, the only way you cast this card confidently, and no one in your playgroup has blown it up, is by using your political skills. The card has to survive a whole rotation for the ability to trigger. It's a sitting duck. You had to make a deal with someone or your playgroup just sucks because you don't run enough re- removal. There's only two five-color commanders I believe are perfect for the Prismatic Bridge. They are Tiamat and the Ur Dragon. One card is so expensive, I know someone in your group made a proxy of it, then the deck was still trash. Let me guess, they proxied the entire deck with all of the best dragons too. Jeesh. That's cheesy. Thank you for watching the first episode of It Ain't That Good. If you disagree with any of the cards, go ahead and leave a comment below. Otherwise, go ahead and subscribe if you like the content and get ready for episode number two. Peace.